I broke into the film industry without going to film school. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can do it too. I'm not gonna go into my life story or like uh, my, my film journey story, basically. I think I already covered that enough in this video right here. And you guys can go check it out on my channel. I, I filmed it about uh, almost two years ago, actually. And I will leave a link down below so you can go look at it. But, you know, I'm just going to try and give you some pointers on how you can get on your first film set. You're a filmmaker who's wanting to break into the industry, but you don't know how to do it yet. You you have goals. You know, you want to make your own feature film someday. You want to make your own series someday. But how the heck do I get started? You know, I have no experience. I've never even been on a set. Today, I'm going to tell you how you can get on set. So get your notebooks out, pay attention. Now, I can't give you an exact route to take if you guys want to get on your first set, but I'm just going to show you how I got on my first set and how that's impacted me in this industry. Impacted? So uh, 2019, I got Tomorrow's Filmmakers, and uh, that was a big turnaround for me. Again, you can go watch that video. I would highly suggest Tomorrow's Filmmakers as a place to start if you are clueless about how to get into filmmaking or how to improve yourself as a filmmaker, as a videographer, whatever it is you want to be. I would start with Tomorrow's Filmmakers. It's at $97 right now and you can buy it with the link down below. So, you know, 2020, um, when I got Tomorrow's Filmmakers, things started to turn around for me when I was uh, in my filmmaking journey, basically. 2020 had some of my best content. Unfortunately, YouTube took most of it down because uh, it violated their community standards but you know after that it led me to join some facebook groups uh, christian filmmakers being one of them and most of you know by now um if you've followed my channel for a while what the kidnap mystery series is and we were planning to make a third kidnap mystery film it did not end up being made all the way i'm sorry i would really like to edit all the footage that we got because we did start filming it just to show you what we were doing with it uh, but it was a film that was very disorganized and I could not see myself finishing it anytime soon with the resources that I had with the people I was working with so I had to basically cancel the film but when I was trying to um, get the production process started I was searching for actors outside of the circle that I knew so I took to Facebook groups I um, I basically put out a casting call I'm looking for this person I'm looking for this person I'm looking for all these different types of people and one person got back to me. Her name is Sheila Munger. She uh, directed the Princess Cut trilogy. And I was I was kind of amazed to find out um, that an actual director reached out to me, an actual producer, writer, and director reached out to me and said, I have a daughter that, would, um, that could be in this film. It ended up not working out, but, you know, because I established that relationship with uh, Sheila and, you know, she took time to talk with me a couple times. We went over Zoom. I actually, I think it was Facebook or something like that that we met on. Facebook uh, video, video chat. It might have been Zoom. She basically took the time to, uh, you know, be a mentor to me almost and show me um, the different things that go into uh, running a set. I wasn't able to do this film that I wanted to do with her, um, but she brought me on my first film set as a PA, a wardrobe PA. I wasn't... <laughs> Wardrobe's not my forte, I'll just say that, but you know, I was getting on a film set for the first time, so I'm just like, Ian, shut up. I was on my first film set as a wardrobe PA, and guys, when you step on that first set, you learn so much about just how crazy the film industry is and just how, how much hard work goes into making a film. Even as just a volunteer, and you know, I wasn't paid for this position, but I learned so much more in addition to what I'd learned from Tomorrow's Filmmakers because you will never learn as much about filmmaking until you actually step foot on a set. There's only so much that um, pencil and paper can teach you and uh, how much textbook can teach you. And you will never learn anything, basically anything, until you actually step on your first set, get hands-on experience. And that's what I got to do when Sheila invited me to work under her um, in the wardrobe department on the fit On the fit when she <laughs> invited me to work under her in the wardrobe department on the movie Making Him Famous, which is out on Pure Flix right now. If you want to watch it, it's a drama. It's it's a it's a, it's a typical Christian drama, but uh, it's not my um, style of filmmaking. But you know, it's out there if you want to see the first movie I worked on. I was also in the movie for one scene. If you can catch the scene I'm in, then uh, good job. But yeah, so I got my first experience on a film set and I I really enjoyed the experience. I know I, I one thing you will you will quickly understand is that 
you will make a ton of mistakes when you get on your first film set. And maybe if you guys want me to do another video about um, what not to do on a film set, just let me know in the comments down below. Yeah, that's how I got on my first film set. And when you're getting into film, I would ask you this one question, okay? What is your goal with this industry? What is your niche? What do you want to do with your filmmaking career? What, what po position or part do you want to play in this industry? Do you want to be a director? Um, if so, then uh, there, you have a long way to go. I want to be a director too. Uh, do you want to be a producer? If you're good at financial uh, situations and uh, handling money, then congrats to you. I applaud you. I am not at that level yet. Or do you want like a simpler job? Um, well, I wouldn't say simpler, but you know, not as like, you know, complex and advanced. Do you want to be a grip on set? Do you want to be the cinematographer and controlling the, the, the picture of the film? Do you want to be a writer? Do you want to write the story behind the film that's being made? Do you want to uh, work crafty? Do you want to feed people on set? You know, I, I, that's not my, my niche, but you know, if you want to do that, that's, that's awesome. And you can do that. Do you want to, you know, just be a full-time PA or BTS operator? That is also an option, but guys, you're never going to get very far if you don't find what your niche is. What, what do you want to do in this industry? What are you good at? What, what do you strive to be good at in this industry? What is your goal? Once you find that out, you will have a better idea of what direction you're going to go, what goal you're going to pursue if you find your niche. Okay. So I've been just yammering on about, um, you know, my, my experience with my first film set. And, you know, I think it's time that I tell you these little steps here that will help you in getting on your first film set. So here we go. My first piece of advice to you is volunteer. Volunteer on a film set, get on Facebook groups, get on uh, whatever uh, Facebook group is local to your state. I know there are Facebook groups dedicated to like, uh, you know, filmmakers in certain states. There's a Florida filmmakers page, there's a Texas filmmakers page. Find a Facebook group that is um, tailored after your state. Okay, I, I before I get a whole bunch of hate for being non-inclusive, um, I know that everyone who is going to watch this video is probably not in the U.S., so uh, if you are in another country, um, just look for a Facebook group that uh, you know is tailored after your country then. Um, if you're in India, look up India Filmmakers. If you're in Canada, look up Canada Filmmakers on Facebook. I'm pretty sure you will find... Uh, a Facebook group that is local to your country and uh, is meant for filmmakers. Just trust me, look it up. You know, for example, there is a West Virginia filmmakers Facebook group. It's not as active as, uh, you know, other Facebook groups like the, you know, the Atlanta and Georgia filmmakers, the North Carolina filmmakers group. If you're like me and you live in, you know, sort of the Appalachian, um, uh, Southern Appalachian area, it would be best to get on the DC, Maryland, Virginia, filmmakers group um that is where you will find more of your jobs if you are looking to get on a set but before you actually book a paying gig and if you do first off great job study hard don't screw up my advice would be volunteer on a set that is the best way you will learn and that is the best way you will make a connection with others and make an impression on the people you're working with and they will want to work with you again maybe even pay you for the next job i would say volunteer on at least three sets three sets to start out with get on facebook groups and just go all out, say, I'm willing to work on this set. I'm willing to gain experience and, you know, work with fellow creatives and just, you know, learn, learn, learn how to, to operate on set. My second piece of advice would be to watch YouTube videos on what your niche is, what your goal is. Uh, watch videos on how to be a grip, watch videos on how to be a gaffer. Look up the duties of a grip on Studio Binder or the duties of a gaffer on Studio Binder. Anyone who tells you that you can't find the uh, the answer you're looking for on YouTube to your, um, to your question, they're lying to you. you. There are YouTube videos out there. I, I know several of my friends, they make YouTube videos on how to work on set. Uh, I will leave their channels down below in the description. They are very good friends of mine, very good at what they do. Yeah, if you wanna be a director, you know, take a masterclass about directing. You know, James Cameron has one masterclass about directing and he says that all it takes to be a director is get a camera, get your sister, your brother, and go go shoot something with them. Have them as the actors. Slap your, your name title in the credits as director. You're a director now. Everything after that is determined by budget and skill. That really has been a motivation for me. But yeah, YouTube videos. 
Go watch YouTube videos on what your niche is, what your goal is. This has been my study year. I want it to be your study year too. And I know, yes, YouTube is a big tyrannical dictator that shadow bans and uh, removes videos they don't agree with, but there are a lot of good videos out there too and a lot of creators that put a lot of time and effort into them. Okay, my piece of advice number three is get to most filmmakers. I know I'm not, I don't want to be the guy that's just like say, go get this course because it's going to make everything much better. I'm, I don't want to sound like one of those gurus, but guys, I have used to most filmmakers. And if you really do want a narrowed down search of what your niche is in this filmmaking industry, get to most filmmakers. It is $97. It is a steal of a price. It was originally on a discount when I bought it, but that was the discount was like $295, I believe. The original price of the course was near $700. So $97 is a no brainer for this course. I would highly suggest it. Please go get it if you want to learn filmmaking without going through a bunch of red tape and you know, just hours and hours of trying to search for the video that's trying to help you on YouTube, which you can do, but to most filmmakers really narrows it down. My fourth piece of advice is find a mentor. Find a mentor that is going to help you and build you up in this industry. One that's going to teach you and is going to correct you when you, you make a mistake, who's going to congratulate you when you do something great. Yeah, just find a mentor. Sheila was a very good mentor to me and there are plenty of people out there who are willing to help you. You just have to, you know, you just have to find them. You have to ask around. You could do what I did. Ask, uh, ask them to help you on a failed feature you were gonna do. Another thing is an inner circle. Find an inner circle of friends who is who are constantly gonna build you up. They're, they're not gonna say you suck. You're, you're, you're never gonna make in this industry. No, they're an inner circle of friends who are, you know, have the same interests as you. They are going to build you up and correct you when you are going downhill. They're going to give you critique, not only that, that brushes off all the muddiness, but they're going to, they're going to build you up essentially find your inner circle. My next piece of advice is to register with the film commission. This is probably further down the line when you you're done volunteering, you have a few paid gigs under your belt. But you know, you can register with the Film Commission for your state. I'm registered with the WV Film Commission. There are film commissions everywhere. Even WV has one. If you live in Texas, you know, just register with the Texas Film Commission. You'll be in their directory. Uh, North Carolina, I know they have one. Almost every state should have one. Just register with the Film Commission. That's an easier way to get jobs. I, I don't know why it took me forever to register with them. I was, I'm still learning guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just showing you um, everything that I've been through and I'm trying to learn this with you. My next piece of advice is attend festivals and workshops, as many as you can. Not only will you get um, this cool education and just like this very enlightening education on whatever, um, whatever film niche you are trying to cover in the workshop, but at film festivals, you will meet like-minded creatives and people who you might work with in the future and might want to work with you in the future. You can find jobs at film festivals too. Uh, you know, they're not just places where you screen films. Uh, one place that I go to is the Christian Worldview Film Festival and I've made tons of connections there. I've ended up on set with uh, a good friend of mine that I met there. And I hope to work with him again in the future. He's a very good friend of mine. But guys, attend festivals. You don't just have to submit a film to get into a film festival. You can you know, just go to connect with people and take workshops. They have workshops at um, the Christian Worldview one. And uh, I've been to content which is down in texas i haven't been to the international christian film festival yet it's pretty expensive but maybe someday in the future but yeah film festivals you can make a lot of great connections there go to film festivals the next piece of advice i have is to make a short film okay i don't have a camera ian well guys if you have a you know, a little bit of allowance or you know anything close to uh you know 300 bucks here's what you can do Get the Canon T2i. It is a great starter camera for, um, you know, filming uh, low-budget short films, and you know, it, it, it served me um, my first two years as a beginner filmmaker, and I think it will help you guys too. You can get it on eBay. You can get a lot of great deals on eBay. So just go check out eBay, find the Canon T2i. It should be priced pretty fairly on there, and use that to start with. Write a short film out. Make it, guys. Short film after short film after short film is how you make it to making your own features someday. Link down below if you want to buy that camera. My next piece of advice is be patient with yourself. You are not going to get everything right away. I promise you that. You have to be patient. You have to, you know, keep your head cool. It's going to seem frustrating at times, you know, this process of, you know, building up a relationship with, uh, you know, people in this industry, a connection with people in this industry, building up, you know, your resume with projects you've worked on. It's going to get irritating at times how slow it's going, but be patient, guys. Trust me. If you are persistent enough, if you are hardworking enough, you will accomplish your goals in this industry. Believe me. I'm on my way to it. It's been a long time coming. Well, no, not really. Two years. 
oh, if I think about it, you know, 2016, seven years since I actually, you know, started filming with a camera. But two years I've been doing this professionally and been trying to make my own feature someday. And I am getting closer than I have ever been before. Be patient with yourself. Be patient. Guys, you will get there. Trust me. Be patient. Keep working hard. My next piece of advice is practice. Practice your skill. Practice. Rehearse everything. If you want to be an actor, be recording self-tapes. Be doing monologues. Get your friend over to read sides with you. Act. And I know you know, actors need a coach. Um, if you can afford a coach, I'm still looking to get a coach in the future when I can afford one. But guys, practice your skill. It may not even be for acting. Practice with cinematography. If cinematography is your niche, practice with your camera. If lighting is your niche, practice lighting. You know, study people. See how light bounces off of them. Always practice. If you want to be an editor, practice editing. Get an editing software. I know DaVinci Resolve is free. At least the non-studio version is. Get DaVinci Resolve. You know, get some footage together. Like, you know, you can pull footage off the internet. You can pull footage off Pixabay. Edit with it. Color with it. Mess around with it. Get to know your craft, find your niche, and practice with it. My last and final step is to pray. I know not all of you watching this video are going to be, you know, Christians or, or people who have, um, you know, faith in God, but prayer is essential to my life as a filmmaker, and not just as a filmmaker, but my life as a follower of Christ. I, I would not be where I am today without, you know, the intervention of Christ in my life and continual prayer and seeking the Lord in all, all things I do, all things. I can't do anything without him and you know, expect it to turn out great because he's given me this gift. I can't use it without him. I have to keep him at the center, it's just the way it is. Pray. That's all I have for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know what kinds of videos you want me to do, what questions you have, and maybe I'll make videos about them. If you wanna join a community of filmmakers who are going to help you and you know, push you towards your goal in this industry, join this Facebook group that I'm a part of. It's called The Film Network. It's run by my good friend, Simon Dunn. There are tons of creatives on there and people in this industry that are willing to help you and that are you know, open to uh, talking about you know, what your goals are and helping you achieve those goals. I know I'm beating this like a dead horse, but guys, get to Miles Filmmakers, please. If you want to get even further to your goal in this film industry, it is something that will help you. It is better than the crazy price of full-time filmmaker. I haven't got full-time filmmaker, but I'm sure it's great. But Tomales Filmmakers, guys, it turned me around. It'll turn you around if you're, you know, in a like a dead end spot, not knowing which direction to go. Get Tomales Filmmakers. But anyways, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. God bless. And see you next time.